Hi class, today we're talking about the parabola, and we have a definition here on the screen. And as I read the definition, I'm going to draw out the different parts. So we have the definition of a parabola as a collection of all points in a plane that are some distance d from a fixed point f. What in the world does that mean? Well, let's draw our two points. Here is our fixed point called the focus, and then... Here is a fixed line called the directrix. And the, look, and the collection of all the points that are equidistant from the focus and the directrix is called the parabola. It might be hard to see that all the points on the parabola are equidistant from the focus and the directrix. And because this is a hand sketch drawing, it might be hard to see that it's true. So instead of relying on my drawings, let's go look at this graph in Desmos. So looking at this graph in Desmos, my parabola is drawn in black. My directrix is the blue line, and my focus is the green dot. And you can see that the black dot on the parabola, no matter where it moves, the distance in orange to the focus and the distance in orange to the directrix is always the same. And so you can move this to the left and to the right. You can see that that directrix to the parabola and the parabola to the focus will always be the same distance. Let's write that in algebraic terms. The distance from the focus to the parabola is equal to the distance from the parabola to the directrix. Just to identify one more piece of the parabola, we have a very special name for the dot right here at the vertex. And the distance from the focus to the vertex is known as A. Since every point on the parabola is equidistant to the focus and the directrix, then the vertex is also equidistant. And the distance from the vertex to the directrix would also be A. The distance from the focus to the vertex that we call A will be used in our equations of parabolas. Let's start with the parabolas where the vertex is at the origin. Our first image is of our parabola facing right. And you can see that the vertex is at the origin. The focus is at A0 and our directrix is at X is equal to negative A. Our A is always positive as our A is the distance from the vertex to the focus and also the distance from the vertex to the directrix. If you have a sideways pacing parabola, then the equation is y squared is equal to 4ax. I'm going to admit to you guys that I'm very visual and when I read the words, there's a lot of ambiguity for me when I read the words. But once I draw out what the words say, then it's very clear to me what's happening. And that helps me decide which formula to use. Right now we only have one formula, but as we build on our list of formulas to use, you want to get the idea in your head. So the question tells us to find the equation, and at the very end it tells us to graph. And I tell you, go ahead and graph what you know first, because that gives you a good idea of what picture you're going to make and then that helps you decide which formula you want to use. I'm going to put my focus at 0, 2 in pink, and then my vertex at the origin in blue. Now it should be very obvious to you that the distance from the focus to the vertex is 2. So we're going to go that distance in the opposite direction to find where our directrix is at. And our directrix is vertical, so we're going to use x is equal to negative 2 as our equation for the directrix. And that should give us an idea for the direction the parabola is going to face. So we're going to draw it in facing right. And looking at the equation, the only piece of information we need to fill in is the a value. And right now we know the a value is 2. So therefore, my equation is going to be y squared is equal to 
times 2 times x. In other words, y squared is equal to 8x. And there's our equation for this parabola that we already drew. The lattice rectum is the line parallel to the directrix, but it goes through the focus. So we're if, look, if we're looking for the two points that are defined, that define the lattice rectum, we're looking at the two points here. We know the x value for those two points is 2. And so we plug that into our equation to find out our values of y. So we would get y squared is equal to 8 times 2. And you'd get y squared is equal to 16. So y is equal to plus or minus 4. And since we plugged in the value x equals 2, and we know that y is equal to positive or negative 4, then these are the two points that define the lattice rectum. For this next question, we know that the vertex is at 0, 0. We know that it contains a point 2, 3. And because it has axis of symmetry on the x-axis, then it also contains a point 2, negative 3. So we can sort of sketch the idea of the parabola. But to be honest, we don't know anything else. We don't know our a value. We don't know where our focus is. We don't know where the directrix is. But we do know which equation we want to use. And if I plug in the x and the y value of the point that I know, then I can figure this out. So the equation says y squared is equal to 4ax. And we're going to replace the y with 3. We're going to replace the x with 2. And so we get 9 is equal to 8a. So a is equal to... 9 over 8. So then that gives us all the information we need to come up with the equation. The equation will be y squared is equal to 4 times a times x. And we can simplify that a little bit. And we would get y is equal to 9 over 2x. So that's our equation. And we're not asked for this information, but we do know where our focus is now. Our focus is located an a distance away from the vertex. So that's going to be at the point 9 eighths 0. And then we would go in the opposite direction and draw our line that distance away. And the equation of that line is x is equal to 9 eighths. It's important that we figure out where the focus is to be able to find the lattice rectum. So the lattice rectum is parallel to the directrix through the focus, and so we know that the x value there is 9 eighths. Let's plug that in for our x value in our equation. We're going to get y squared is equal to 9 over 2 times x, and our x is 9 eighths. So that gives me 81 over 16. Oops, that should say y squared is equal to 81 over 16. To solve for y, you're going to square root both sides and take the plus and minus sign of it. So we're going to get y is equal to plus or minus 9 over 4. So our, our points are 9 eighths, 9 fourths, and 9 eighths, negative 9 fourths. And that would be these two points at the end of the lattice rectum. So far we've done two parabolas with a vertex at 0, 0 facing right. Now if I wanted to instead say facing left, the difference would be that you put a negative in this equation here. Now of course the picture will look different, but all the items would be at the same spot. So you would still have your vertex at the origin. You would just turn this the other way around. And you would put your focus here and your directrix on the other side. If we want to move our parabola away from the origin, 
we would move our vertex over to HK. That means we're going to move H steps in the X direction and K steps in the Y direction. So all of our values will change accordingly. Our focus will end up at A plus H, 0 plus K, and our directrix will be at X is equal to negative A plus H. Once again, each of our X values will add H to it, and each of our K values, each of our Y values will add K to them. Also, our formula, which was Y squared, becomes Y minus K squared, and then it was 4AX, and the X becomes X minus H. Notice that I put parentheses around each of the variables, and I subtract the H or the K values inside my equation. That's the equation for a parabola facing left or right. But if I want to make it face up or down instead, I'm just going to change the location of the x and the y's. So instead of y minus k squared, I'm going to write x minus h squared, and then 4 times a, and in parentheses, y minus k. So notice I switched the position of the x and the y. I like to think of it as the up and down parabolas are x squared, and the left and right parabolas are y squared, and that helps me pick which formula to use. So for question number three, we are asked to find the equation of the parabola with, a, um, with these properties given. Now, I don't know if it's facing up or down, or if it's facing left or right. It's really hard to tell, but I can figure that out by graphing it. So it says my focus is at negative 3, 4. I'll label it focus. My directrix is a horizontal line at y is equal to negative 2. And so we assume that our vertex is a point equidistant from both of these. Now the distance from the focus to the directrix is the distance from 4 to negative 2. So that's a distance of 6. So half of that is 3, which would put my vertex right here at negative 3, 1. Let's say vertex at negative 3, 1. Okay, that gives me an A distance of 3. And now I can figure out that the parabola goes away from the directrix and it's going to be facing up. So since it's facing up, I'm assuming that it's going to be a positive x squared. I'm going to go ahead and use this formula on the left, the one that has the x squared, and I'm going to use 3 for my value of a. So I'm going to use this formula that uh, on the left, where it's facing up or down, and I'm going to use the vertex, which I found out was negative 3, 1. So I'm going to get x minus h squared is equal to 4 times a times y minus k. And so that becomes x plus 3 squared, which is 12 times y minus 1. That's our equation. Now if I want to find the endpoints of the lattice rectum, I know that um, the y values over there are 4. So I'm going to plug in y equals 4 into the equation I just came up with. That would be x plus 3 squared is equal to 12 times 4 minus 1. And that becomes 3. And so then I get plus or minus 6, and I would get x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus 6. Let's simplify that. That would be x is equal to negative 3 plus 6, which is 3, and also x is equal to negative 3 minus 6, which is negative 9. So my two points are 3, 4, and negative 9, 4, because I just found the x values for the y value equal to 4. 
Now if you look at my sketch, I obviously did not do the best job at sketching it, but it did help us figure out which equation to use. It, um, but it's not accurate by any means. Question number four asks us to find the vertex, the focus, and the directrix of the equation given. The easiest one to do is the vertex. It's going to be my x and my y modifications. So my vertex is going to be positive 2, negative 1. Keep in mind that we always go in the opposite direction of whatever the sign says for um, the h and the k transformations. And then to get my a value, I'm going to set this coefficient equal to 4a. And so I get a is equal to negative 1. Let's draw that. So I'm going to put my vertex at 2, negative 1. But the question remains, will this be facing up, down, left, or right? Let's look at the equation. It says y, y plus 1 squared. So we're going to go with the y squared graph. And when it's y squared, it's going to go left or right. And since my a solved for was a negative 1, um, then I know that's going to go left. Now technically my a is a 1 because we're always going to take the a as a positive distance. But solving this way helps me figure out which direction to go. So I'm going to go one point in that direction for my focus and one point in the opposite direction for my directrix and I'm going to draw that as a vertical line. So that's going to give me a vertical line at x equals 3. My directrix is at x is equal to 3. And my focus is at 1, negative 1. And then we'll just sketch this graph in. And so we have a left-facing parabola. Once again, we figured out it was left-facing because it was y squared and the a we solved for was a negative, so it's going to go face to the left. And then you can type this into Desmos and verify how well we did. So I pulled up Desmos, and we can see the graph of this equation has a vertex at 2, negative 1. The directrix is at x is equal to 3, and the focus is at 1, negative 1 just like we thought. And that looks similar to the graph that we sketched. Now we're going to do a couple of word problems using parabolas. And I just want to tell you that a paraboloid of revolution is basically a 3D parabola. Imagine if you took a parabola and you spin it on the right at the vertex, um, it would create a paraboloid. Some, some types of paraboloids you might have seen are the following. Here's my crude drawing of a flashlight from the side view, and if you were to cut it in half, you'd see that there's a mirror inside there, and there's a light bulb right here at the focus, and that light bulb um, is giving off light, and that light would be going off the side, and then bouncing off this direction. And it's pretty cool because the shape of the parabola makes all of the rays bounce out parallel to each other. And so you can take one light, bounce it off a curved surface, and all the light goes out. Likewise, if we have a satellite re receiving dish, um, we put the focus right here where it belongs, and all of the rays coming in will bounce off towards that focus. So you only need to have one little receiving portion right here where the focus is, where all the rays will go. And all of the rays coming in will bounce off and go that direction. And so that will capture, the bigger the satellite dish, the clearer the picture is because it's capturing more of the waves. Because we're setting this problem up, um, it's easiest to set it up facing the vert um, with the vertex at the origin. You can face it any direction you want. Let's go ahead and face our vertex, um, let's face our parabola facing up. And the question says, we have a cable TV receiving dish. Um, find the location of the receiver if the dish is six feet across at the opening and two feet deep. 
it says it's six feet across at the opening and so we know that would be at three two and at negative three two for a total distance of six feet from point to point and like i said it's the the distance the depth of two i would have the focus somewhere around here i'm guessing and we're going to figure out the location and how far away from the vertex that is Let's use this equation because we sketched ours facing up and we know the x and y value. I'm going to go ahead and use just the positive one to make life easier. And I'm going to put x squared, so 3 squared is equal to 4ay. And I'm going to solve this. I get 9 over 8 is equal to a. And so that's the distance here. And so my receiver is 9 eighths of a, f of a foot away. Let's write that in a better manner. We probably would never say 9 eighths feet. Um, we'd probably say 1 and 1 eighth or feet away from the vertex. And so we figured out where we should put the receiver to capture the most amount of rays coming into the cable TV dish. This last question is also about a paraboloid of revolution. And it, this one tells us the light source is located two feet from the base. So that tells me my focus is two feet away from my vertex. It tells me it wants the depth of the searchlight to be four feet. And so then it wants to know how wide the opening is there. So to figure that out, I need to use the fact that they gave me the a value of two to come up with my equation and then plug in the value of four. Let's see how that looks. We know that our focus is at two. We also know that my vertex is at the origin. We know we want the depth to be four feet but we don't know how wide it should be. So we, that's what we need to figure out. So how do I find that value of x? Let's start off with using our x squared is equal to 4ay as our equation. We know that our a is equal to 2. because the light is two feet away from the base. So that gives us x squared is equal to four times two times y. So that gives us our equation for this paraboloid. Um, now I want to find my x value if I know the y value. The y value is four. So let's plug that in. We get x squared is equal to 8 times 4. How do I find x? Well, I would basically square root both sides, taking the positive and negative square root. And I'm going to get x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 16 times 2, which gives me plus or minus 4 radical 2. So I would get negative 4 radical 2, 4 for this point, and positive 4 radical 2, 4 for this point. And it says what should the width of the opening be? So I want to go the entire distance, not just from negative 4 radical 2, to zero, but all the way to the other side. So let's take that and multiply it by two. It would be a distance, a width of eight radical two feet. And that's a horrible answer. Who knows what eight radical two is? If I was trying to measure that out at the store, I wouldn't know. So let's use our calculators. And I get 11.313 feet. 
So that'd be 11.313. So after we come up with the equation, you plug in the value that you do know to get the value of the x values um, on the my points, but that's not the value we're looking for. We're looking for the complete distance, so you have to draw it out and realize that our, di our actual distance is twice the value that we found. And then we have to use a calculator to come up with a good decimal approximation. If you have a radical, a decimal approximation is the best in a word problem, but like the problem before, the fraction that was nice and rational, it's okay to leave your answer as 1 and 1 8 feet. But for this one, we don't know what 8 radical 2 is unless we use a calculator. So our answer is 11.31 feet. Thank you and have a good day.